Good afternoon. So um, I just wanted to do a little um, a video today just to introduce uh, Michelle um, and then to talk a little bit about what she does and then to maybe kind of explore some of the specific elements of some of her therapy. So we're hoping to maybe do more of these videos on specific elements of what she does, specific types of yoga that we do at Total Therapy and what Michelle does. Um, so hi, Michelle. Good afternoon, Sarah. How are you? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. You're good. Um, so I think some people might know you, some people might not know you. I think yeah. um, certainly a lot of people might not know the scope of what you do, might not know um, potentially your background, kind of how long okay. you've been doing what you're doing. Um, so I thought it might be quite a good opportunity to kind of really introduce yourself and talk about, you know, how you came to total therapy, how you came to doing the therapies that you're doing. Um, so, yeah, I think it would be quite a, a useful thing for people to know. And then maybe we'll explore in different sections uh, some of the detail of some of the things that you do. OK, that sounds like a plan. So I am Michelle, known Sarah quite a long time. And uh, my background was in humanitarian aid as was hers, and then I got really interested in aromatherapy after being a guinea pig for somebody and fell in love with it and started to study that. Um, so that took me into the realms of holistic therapy, and I did different holistic therapy trainings while I was still working in humanitarian aid. And then I got into yoga and meditation, and that's what really changed my whole life so um it took me off to italy to live in a yoga community where wow. i was for about 14 years so yeah and italy was a game changer really in a lot of ways for me because i started to bring together everything that i knew there i started to work with plants directly and make my own essential oils and obviously got deeper into the yoga and meditation and I also did my women's coaching training in Italy with an English woman that came to Italy to teach it to a bunch of Italian women and me. <laughs> so, that in Italian was, or in English? In she well, she spoke in English, so I had first hand, and then it was translated in Italian, so I had double whammy. So I really <laughs> got, <laughs> got to understand it, and had been working with my own menstrual cycle anyway because I used to suffer a lot with PMT and um, pain and I basically got my hands on a book that said fall in love with your cycle which I kind of thought I was going to just chuck in the wood stove it would be <laughs> <laughs> not worthwhile but it actually fundamentally changed everything for me and I would say my pain reduced by 80% and PMT disappeared Wow! So learning how to work with my cycle led me on then to go and train with Alexandra Pope in Italy and go really deep into how to share that with other women. So that's kind of a nutshell of Italy. So did, um, you, do, much... did you do a lot of your training in the yoga and meditation in Italy or did you do a lot of that before you went to Italy or? So a bit of a mixture. So some training I did in Italy and some I did actually when I came back to England in 2014 so for things for example like meditation I was already teaching that in Italy I used to teach it to um, kids and teenagers because I was part of the Ananda school there um, and then when I came back to England I needed a piece of paper so <laughs> right. I found myself after having lived in a in a yoga community for a long time I never did the formal training and suddenly come back to England and realized I should have done that when I lived there. Right. So I, did, I did that when I came back. Um, and I also went on and did things like hot stone massage uh, diploma to top that up and got into scar work as well. So scar yep. healing for, so I work a lot with things like mastectomy, C-section, joint replacements. So working on that that's so is that a is that a physical therapy is it a hands-on therapy yeah that's a hands-on therapy it's very gentle it's very light touch and it works with the fascial web as well so it's about integrating the scarring and like for example with mastectomy often there's a real restricted movement and after the scar work the movement can come back in and it feels better it loosens up all the adhesions and it's very integrative on an emotional level as well so that's part of what I've done in England 
and then back to the to the meditation um i did i did i got into yoga nidra more when i came back to england and started to use it as a personal practice for me and then went on to train in that as well so that's a big part of what what i work with both in groups and also on a one-to-one -one basis yeah so because i know that you you've also done a lot of um coaching stuff i think you're aware of things like the guest out kind of um methods and things like that so because you do have a lot of different very different strings to your bow and you've got a lot of knowledge about different sorts of um schools of training i think in certain therapies so yeah. um and i think what's great and probably difficult to understand is that you bring all of that into what you offer so yeah. even even your aromatherapy treatments for example you bring elements of everything that you do into that so it's quite hard to potentially explain this is what you're going to get with a treatment because I think it's it's that kind of integrated approach is it that I think we all try to use with all of our training and certainly from a personal point of view you've got a background in physical therapy but then you study movement therapy you study hands-on therapy so you bring that all into something very unique and I think that's I think that's quite an important port, uh, part of what you do um, because it's very hard to explain when I think you know I, I think very progressive therapists and good therapists are the ones that do carry on training and they add lots of different things um, yeah. to bring to a very unique treatment but that can be quite hard to explain to people if they don't know potentially what it is you do. Yeah and that's been quite challenging so I've, I've now um, basically I sort of describe myself as a women's wellness specialist and yoga teacher and right. that kind of encompasses everything without going into aromatherapy and Reiki and scar work and um, everything else that I do. And, and yeah, it's true. I have a, I mean, I've done a lot of therapy myself for me, for my own progression, um, which I think as a therapist is a really important thing to do because you get a yeah. handle on different approaches. So I've dipped into body psychology and went on to do a diploma in body listening skills. So that will often come into a physical treatment with somebody for massage because the body holds the score of the mind. So if someone's got a pain in the shoulder that just won't go, um, you can massage it until the cows come home or they've been to see another physio or whatever. Often it's a psychosomatic thing. So body psychology works very quickly with getting to the root cause, which can then free up um, the body because the body's yeah. holding the memory of what's happened. So, And I think, I think that's quite important because I think as as physical therapists, I think we often get to a point where there is a limit to what we can achieve because you, yeah. get, you get to a block and then you realize through potentially more questioning and getting to know somebody a bit more that that block is actually probably not a physical yeah. pain. It could be something yeah. that's happened previously. It might be a trauma. It might be a car accident. It might be a bereavement. Yeah. So I think, and I think that's, I think that's where as therapists working with different therapists is actually really, really important so yeah and likewise for me it's good for me to be able to refer somebody you know if I'm doing a an aromatherapy and it's a more serious injury I've got you there to refer them to so it works really well for me as well to have this sort of holistic all-rounded approach and you know the body things like fibromyalgia for example they're beginning to realize is trauma-based it's usually related back to trauma that's yeah. expressing through the body so you know, I might start off with somebody coming in for a gentle, hands-on, soothing aromatherapy for their body, which is wonderful. And it might move into doing some one-to-one -one yoga nidra to look at the trauma itself. Not everybody wants to do that, and that's fine. So, but there's that option there for people. They can come and see me as a bodywork um, therapist or as a yoga teacher. And if they're really interested in taking things down a level and get into the root cause which is really where we need to go and that takes time you know it's like taking off layers and being done in a gentle safe space then we it can bring really deep healing so that's what I love about what I do I think is I often start with people who come in for a lovely relaxing aromatherapy massage which in itself is lovely to have and that's what yeah. I would go and have as a, as a choice for me um, and some people want to come in, have that and float out the door and that's as far as they want to go. And that's great. And then with others, as, as time builds and trust builds, we start to take off the layers 
Um, so they'll come in for an aromatherapy, but we might end up doing some body psychology or, or a yoga nidra one to one. I think that's I think that's quite an um, quite an interesting important point because I think you know if people don't know about these therapies and I think people can be a bit scared yeah. um, of maybe going too deep into something that they might be a little bit resistant to but I think that's where the, the physical therapies the massage therapies they are a really good avenue into that and I think a lot of people might kind of think oh I don't want to do that because I don't want them to delve into x y and z but I think it's important for people to know that you know, as, as trained, experienced therapists, that you're never going to push somebody into something that they don't want to do. If they're not ready to do something, then, you know, that massage therapy is going to be where they are at that point. And everybody reaches their own point and their own um, pathway, I suppose, their own, what works for them is different for everybody. But as therapists, I think we, we would never push somebody into something that they're not going to do or don't want to do. And I think that's quite important for, for people to know as well. Really important for them to feel really safe. And I kind of have an intuition about what people are ready for and what they're not for. So I'll only ever make an invitation to somebody. And if they want to go with it, we will. But what I've realised is that a lot of people, when you start to talk about delving a bit deeper, they think it's going to be talking therapy and they have to relive everything. And actually, when you work through the body with body psychology or with yoga nidra or with things like somatic experiencing, they're body-based um, ways of working with, with stuff that's blocking you. But the body releases it. You don't have to talk about it. And often, often we have blocks in us and we don't know why. There's something might have happened to us or there's been a situation that, that we've blocked. And we can do that. We can go into... Um, disassociation and all that sort of stuff but when you start to work with the body and I could just literally sit and watch somebody and they might be doing something with their hand and then you start to go into that and suddenly the hand will do so it throws it off and sometimes we'll say I know exactly what that was about and other times it will be well that was interesting I haven't got a clue but I feel all right so that's good so it's not talking therapy has its place for certain things but working through the body is a fast route into releasing um, old blockages without having to go into all the talking, you know? Yeah. So a lot of people, I think, don't, under, don't understand that because it's not, you know, it's not widely out well, there. It's not, it's, not, it's not mainstream. And I think, you know, yeah. what's, yeah. you know, with the, with the mental health um, publicity at the moment, I think people are very confused about, what help there is and you know there's so many different avenues not only from a from a mind therapies with cbt and hypnotherapy and counseling and psychology and psychiatry and there's so many different things that i think it can be quite overwhelming for somebody who is potentially suffering with emotional problems or blockages or trauma to actually know where to go and i think what's kind yeah. of quite interesting from what you're saying is that, well, maybe there is a slightly less scary avenue through something as simple as having a massage. And, you know, I think as therapists, it's important to kind of say that we're, we're also not going to work with conditions that are out of our scope of practice or mm-hmm. our remit, because we, we know the point to refer. Because if somebody's really struggling with mental health issues, then, you know, you kind of go, well, that's, that's not my, that's not my arena. Um, but I think it's important that people know that they're, there are avenues that don't necessarily open up those boxes that they might be quite scared of talking about. Um, and I think that's, I think that is quite an important part of what is available to, to, to for people to be educated about really. Um, so what sort of, um, what sort of conditions, I suppose, what sort of people do you tend to see? Do you tend to see mainly women? Do you tend to see people that have pain or, do you tend to have people more with emotional trauma or stress, anxiety issues? What's your... Yeah, so it's quite varied, but I would say probably the majority is I see women who do too much <laughs> um, or have stress and anxiety going on or just know that something needs, something's not quite right. Um, sleep issues as well can come in quite often um, as the, the calls for coming to see me. Um, but often... Oh, I've got something come up on my computer. Sorry, my te- I'm not very good at technical stuff. I'm good at some other stuff, but technical's not on my <laughs> hit list. Um, so, yeah, I tend to work a lot. Just it, it, I've become a women's wellness specialist because of um, 
everything I do kind of brings it all together. I work a lot with women um, for aromatherapy and all that sort of thing and, and with the yoga. But for the menstrual and the menopause work that I do, um, some women come to see me about that and that's, that's, that's how we get in. The menstrual cycle is one of the key things for women where we find deep healing, you know, not just from period pain, but from the things that are blocking us. Again, it's a body mind link and learning how to work with that. And I see a lot of women who are exhausted, who are just doing too many different things. They're mums, they're wives, they're working, they're doing this, they're doing that. So some of what I do is actually teaching women or sharing with them how to bring regular deep rest into their lives without feeling guilty. So, right. That, I think yeah. that is, um, yeah, I think that encompasses what we all, we all probably think we need, but don't know how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> we all know we need it, but we don't know yeah, how to do it. You just need somebody to give you permission sometimes and say, you know, we're not always supposed to be running around and doing. And here's the thing. When we learn to really, um, take some self-care for ourselves and that means time basically it doesn't just mean going to have a massage or going for a manicure it means taking some time out um, we, we, we rest and from there we're able to give more you know as women we give too much and then the, a resentment can creep in and I see this a lot with clients that come in they'll start talking and my question is always what do you do for you what are you doing for you? And often, you know what we're like as women. Mm. Not a fat lot. So yeah. <laughs> it's kind of working with that as well. So, if, you know, if somebody does come in, for example, for an aromatherapy massage and they're like exhausted, they start talking about why. And then it goes off more into a coaching thing. It can go into that sometimes. Or Yeah. So I would say women who do too much, stress and anxiety, menstrual and menopause issues. I also work with, Women who, um, like I work a lot with womb yoga and yoga nidra for, for fertility and stuff like that as well. I've worked with women to heal from miscarriage. So it's a real mixture, but it's all about women. And okay. I, obviously I do scar work for men as well and yoga yeah. for men, but my main, it's organically grown. Your main passion. Yeah, and I, yeah. you know, a lot of the workshops I do are around holding safe space for women to come where they can explore issues like menopause or anger or pain in a safe place. And what I've noticed and what I love is when women come together in a safe place, they find their voices and start to speak and share, and it becomes very animated. And that in itself is very, very healing. Very healing. So anyway, I could speak about it forever. But <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well, we'll, um, we'll leave that there. I think that's been really useful. Um, so thank you very much for that. And then um, hopefully we shall reconvene again to talk about um, maybe some specific elements of the, the, the treatments and the yoga that you teach. Um, so thank you. We'll see you, uh, we'll see you when we're at the end of this lockdown. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, a, for a flat white and a cream cake. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Nice to see you. And you.